Namaskar. My name is Somdeep Datta and I welcome all of you in today's episode of the Indic Chat. Let's pause a few moments. So it is my honor that you have taken time out of your Sunday evening and to be with me here. Uh, meanwhile, it is a cloudy morning in New Jersey, cold and cloudy uh, in the United States where I live. We are actually expecting heavy rains tonight. So you are listening to an episode of the Indic Chat. It is organized by the Indic Book Club and takes place every Sunday at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. And in, in New York, that would be 9.30 in the morning. And in fact, after this talk, I would encourage you all to go to the IndicBookClub.com website and or look for the Indic Book Club handle in Twitter and find out all about the wonderful things that this organization does, it, like it promotes uh, authors like us. The, the media partners for this series are the Creative India Magazine and Swarajya Magazine. I'm sure you know one or both of them. So once again, I'm Somdeep Datta. I live in New Jersey. I work in the financial industry in New York, Monday to Thursday. And my Friday profession is to create digital comics based on the Indian legacy of literature and history. I publish under the banner of lilbooks.com. And one of my current ongoing works is a comic book adaptation of Mahabharata in six parts. Now the title of today's chat is Married to Comics. The, the genesis of this topic, in fact, comes from a conversation with my wife. One day, quite angrily, she looks at me and says, you know, this comic book thing of yours is, I feel that you are married to it. It's like, it's my thought. So, well, that's how I got to be, I, I got to be married to comics. So today I, I want to cover three things in this talk. Why I write, why I write comics in particular, and why I write digital comics. And in the process of answering these questions, you will learn a lot more about myself and my work. So at the end of this talk, you will have about 15 minutes for questions and answers. If I can't answer all the questions that I received during this live video, I'm going to write it in the chat itself. Okay. So why I write? Now, I did not want to write. In fact, I, I did not want to do anything in particular. My lifelong ambition was to be a perpetual learner. So just take it all in, just learn all the wonderful things in this world. How, how does this work? How does the economy work? How does the machines work? So I got into engineering. I went to IIT Kharagpur and there I just, I learned about how the computers work and how the telephone network works. So after that, I went to Princeton University for a PhD in electrical engineering. And I kept learning more wonderful things about the wireless network and all sorts of the, the huge giant engineering infrastructure, which enables you know, the, the lifestyle that we all currently live in. So after Princeton, I went to Wall Street. So in, in Wall Street, in that era, it was a time when everything was becoming more and more mathematical and automated. So they needed folks like me from engineering background. In fact, in electrical engineering, we study the properties of noise. And that is so that we can take that noise out of your telephone systems. And that turns out to be very useful in Wall Street. Because, well, not surprisingly, the stock market with its ups and downs behaves very similar to noise in your phone systems. And that's how I got in and eventually built my career as a Wall Street mathematician or quant as they call us. So in Wall Street, I learned how does the economy work and how does the stock market work? And my learning was like, great, I, I, I was blessed. And it turns out that it is not all too complicated. Once you see beyond the details, things are very simple. Well, so that's how in 13 years of working for Wall Street, I figured all that and I kind of got a sense of how the world ticks. Of course, I have to say, I've been also married for 13 years, but I can't claim that I understand how women work. 
let's put that aside. So to repeat what I said, it, it turns out that all is not too complicated, but I felt that not everyone feels that way. There is a deluge of information and details which drowns all that. But I felt that I can see the inherent simplicity in things, how things are connected, how things are related, and that makes it all easy to understand all that. And I felt that it was a gift. So at some point of time, I felt that it's not enough to just learn. I need to give it back. I can, I feel that I can take a complicated thing, break down its layers and make it easy for others to see what is going on. To, to give a specific example, the Mahabharata epic, it's a giant epic with a lot of side stories, tales and connections, thousands of characters. Now, I felt that there are many who get overwhelmed by this complexity and I felt that I can make it better. I can explain the inside of this big giant story. There is a very simple story of simple people and their ambitions, their conflicts are not too different from what we know from the characters all around us. So I felt that I'm going to do an adaptation of Mahabharata, which is which sticks to the simple story. And it also makes the geography and history of that era very clear and connected to the history of ancient India. So that is why I started learning and I stopped being a perpetual learner. Okay. So writing is fine. Now, why do I write comics in particular? I needed a media which is visual and yet which gives time to think, pause and understand. I have always loved comics, Amar Chitragatha in particular, Tintin. But for me, a pivotal year was 1987. I was 11 years old. So that year, PKS Kutti, a veteran cartoonist from Kerala, joined the Bengali newspaper Ajkal. So for that small Bengali daily, that was a coup. They would put Kutti's cartoons right on the front page, not in a corner, but right up, like as the headline image. And for me, that had a giant influence. Before that, comic books and cartoons were for the kids. But now I see that it isn't just for the kids. It's, it's what the adults read with their morning cup of tea. And not only that, this cartoonist, Kuti, from Kerala, who did not speak a word of Bengali, contributed his cartoons to this daily for years and years. So definitely this is a medium that cuts across all language barriers. And since then, comics has been a part of my daily diet of reading. And I would write and scribble cartoons all over my notebook on the margins and on the sidebars. Now in the United States, particularly in the U USA, comics had a, have had a lot of ups and downs. It had a golden era in the 1930s and 40s, and it sort of declined in the 50s. Now the cause of declines were several. One was there was a public backlash against what they felt was too much of violence in the comic books in the 40s in particular. But secondly, there was also this emergence of television, which eventually emerged as the main visual media replacing comic books. But since then, there has been a slow emergence. In the 1980s, comic books started coming back with a more diversity of topics, taking things from history, human experience, making it richer in content. In fact, last year, the, it was a comic book which won the first prize in the young people's category for the US National Book Award. It's a very prestigious award. It has been there since uh, 70 years. But this was the first time that a comic book won the first. In fact, today in middle schools and high schools, you can see comic books show up in the reading lists, in, even in compulsory reading assignments of students. So there has been a revival of interest. It's still not main mainstream, but it's in a much better place. And I feel that that's the perfect medium for me. Now, of course, 
animation movies have always been there and people love it and too many you draw a parallel between animation movies and comics and then they are related they are closely related they are both very rich visual media but i would also want to point out a very significant difference between comic books and animation movies firstly in comic books you get to read at your own pace you get to stop or flip back unlike as in movies things get hurled at you at a speed chosen by the director so in that respect a comic book is much closer to a book which gives you room for more thought and absorption secondly in a comic book also gives you more room for imagination in an animation movie screens frames are being hurled at you at a rate of 32 frames per second there is no detail that is left for you to imagine everything is out there whereas a comic books is very different even though it's visual yet there is gap between the panels for example in one in one panel you might see the character walking towards a manhole and in the second panel you see he's gone and you get to imagine what happened and, and a good comic create creator tries to take advantage of the fact he allows room for imagination between panels so i concluded that yes comics is the medium for me now of course i decided that i want to write comics but why write digital comics okay so i'm a commuter i spend a lot of time in trains traveling in and out between new jersey and new york and i see a lot of people reading so when i started commuting a lot of that would be just paper books or newspapers with time kindles showed up more time you start seeing smartphones ipads now i have always been reading comics so i started looking at um, comic books in iphone but i always felt that there was something inadequate there comic books are typically written in a big page format and if you stuff it into an iphone or or a smartphone any smartphone you have to squint there are only two ways of doing that you either take the whole page and squish it in which case you have to squint or in some cases they would break up that page into smaller frames that can be read in that phone but the comic books are not written like that it's not naturally written in a way that it's easy to see in a phone so that's what i felt that there is a big gap here i see a lot of people in the train reading in their phones and i felt that there is no way you can read a good comic book in that format of course this is an opportunity but this is a challenge too so my books are very uh, adapted towards reading in a smartphone but it's it's difficult for me to explain without actually showing it physically to someone now eventually i'm going to do a print version too but for me pursuing digital comics is still the primary channel so at this point uh, i want to talk a little bit about my books my first book was the illustrated dilavati in in the 12th century bhaskar acharya wrote that book and as soon as it did the book immediately superseded all previous works and became the book it became the standard textbook in india and it remained it retained that status for many many centuries there were hundreds of manuscript copies translations and commentaries translations for of lilavati was published from rajasthan to orissa from kerala to agra so what bhaskar acharya did is that he blended poetry and mathematics in his work and so what i did is i said okay i'm going to add visual arts to that and make it a triple so that's how i created the illustrated lilavati and in that process i also added tidbits of history for example uh, how does the indian method of multiplication on a dust board work and why that makes the method different than doing multiplication on paper uh, in in the process in the specific word problems in uh, in lilavati there are references to meters of sanskrit poetry or how the purity of gold is me measured so i added a little tidbits of information about those things too so at the time when i was working on lilavati someone said oh okay 
so you are working on a book about math world problems i don't know maybe there is a market for about 50 people in the world who want to read that sort of thing okay so i was a little discouraged but i kept working uh, in fact one day i'm traveling in the train it's a crowded train and i'm reviewing a draft version of the illustrated Lilavati. and then there is someone an african-american gentleman who kind of looks over my shoulder into my app he says hey man that's a cool app oh I, I was like deeming so i explained him the book i told him where to find it once it is out and i had a big smile on my face the entire day after all i had found at least one of those 50 people who would read this book so my my next book was an adaptation of mahabharata so it is it is my most ambitious project yet it's a six part adaptation and two of the parts have been released so far the first part is seeds of war which traces the origin of the kuru and panchala kingdoms and it starts right with the beginning of uh, the drying up of the saraswati river my my focus in adapting mahabharata is twofold firstly i want to bring out the core story the circumstances and motivation of the key characters and without getting lost in the labyrinth of all the side tales so i ask the readers to look at how the ambitions and emotions of the key characters drive the storyline and not to not to get lost in logic like okay the tales of previous incarnations and curses and predictions not to say that those are not important but mahabharata is many things to many people and for me what strikes me most is the simple story inside it secondly i wanted to make the reader keenly aware of the geopolitics of the land which is very strongly tied to the personal agendas of the main characters as well so i refer to the fertile plains between the ganga and yamuna river as the heartland and the story starts with the history of the kuru and the panchala kingdoms which between them divide this heartland and i also explain the geography of other kingdoms as and when they come into play I have many books to write. I want to write more on the history, highlighting specific topics with colorful maps and illustrations. I want to write about the Maratha empire. I want to write about uh, astronomy. I want to write about physics, medicine. I, I, just, I just think that in this world where there is a deluge of information, I can break that down I can make that inherent, I can make that complexity go away by using simple visuals and bite-sized pieces delivered that adapts to the short attention span that seems to be afflicting us a lot in today's day and era. So that was kind of the summary of what I do. The, um, I have another book, a simpler book on, on Durga. So after I had finished Lilavati, I felt that the book was probably more esoteric. Maybe it appealed to people who had a very specific interest and I wanted to go wider. And, and that is when I published Durga. It is, it, is, it is my fastest book yet. It was written in less than two weeks. I was planning to release it just before the Durga Puja, that was two years ago. And, and that is when I actually felt that, that it's, that what, what matters more is, is, is not to write in a very complex or in a very scholarly way, but in a way that appeals, a, a way that appeals to children also appeals to adults. So that was like a point of momental shift in my writing where I, where I felt that the simplicity that I was promising to deliver is something that I had not yet captured in Lavati. And, and, and that was a point where I felt that simplicity is, simplicity is, is, simplicity is something you learn from a child. So well, 
So Durga was kind of my stepping stone towards going on for tackling on harder, more difficult problems, uh, more difficult projects like the Mahabharata. So yeah, so uh, I think I will kind of summarize here. So the things that I spoke about today, I, I spoke about why I wanted to learn, uh, why I wanted to write, that is how from being a perpetual learner, I became someone who wants to contribute and someone who wants to unravel the simplicity of things. And then I spoke about why I picked comics, which is a visual media, and yet it has room for thoughts and imagination. And thirdly, I spoke about why I specifically picked digital comics, which is to make this media more accessible in small devices and smartphones. So I think I will, I will stop here and I will, I will take more questions. Um, Sridharanji has been asking if you, if I use any illustration software for creating my pages and if yes, which, so the software that I use is called Inkscape. Uh, it is very similar to Adobe illustrator. And so, so the, so what I use is, a my drawing is entirely in vectors. I mean, I'll tell you a few words about that. You can store images in either bitmaps, which is which is basically a page full of dots, or you can store an image in terms of vectors, that is geometric shapes, circles, arcs, squares, rectangles. So I chose to do the later, which, which, which makes not only the book smaller, but also it makes it a lot crisper. So Dimpelji has been asking, could you please share the links of your books with us? Sure. In fact, um, yeah, I'm going to post it here. But the easiest way to find my books is through the apps. If you are an iPhone user, um, bring up your iBooks and simply search for my name, so MDIP. If you are a Android user, Android user, you can either look for me in Google Play Store or just Play Store, or you can also use the Kindle app uh, for Android. Um, any more questions? Okay. Um, do I intend to bring out hard copies? So I'm actually, I am planning to uh, bring out Mahabharata in uh, hard copies. Um, right now I have released two episodes of the Mahabharata. After the third one is out, I plan to put all three of them in a single book. That will probably take about maybe six months or, or so. So yeah, I, I do plan to bring um, Mahabharata in hard copies. Is Inkscape specific, specific, especially for smartphones? Um, Inkscape is not for smartphones. Inkscape is, a, is the app which I use for drawing. So that is available for PC and Mac. Uh, but of course, once I create the book, then it is available in smartphones. And how have my books sold? Well, right now I have been um, right now I've been trying more to promote my media. So most of my books are free at this point, except one or two. So yeah, so right now I would say I am very far from being a you know a super hotshot author. But yeah, um, this is just the beginning of my journey. So Dimpleji is asking, how has your self-publishing experience been? So self-publishing has been definitely wonderful in terms of the power that it gives you, that you no longer are limited by publishers. You can just write and then just go out. But of course, that means you've got to do a lot of things yourself. For me, being a graphic artist myself, I did not have to rely on someone else to do my cover images, for example. But still, uh, I find it very challenging to do the marketing aspect. That is, not, as a creator, that is not something comes inherently to me. So that is definitely the biggest challenge for a self-published author. 
so connect indic is asking can you please work on infographics for all texts like the one you did for rigveda well uh, first of all thank you i i had not realized that my rigveda inf infographic has been seen um that was definitely something that i totally loved uh yes i i do want to uh, uh, produce more such stuff so in fact to tell a few things about that so that is the rigveda infographic that i have is not a static infographic right so one of the things i do not like about many of the infographics is that it puts a huge amount of information on a long panel and i find that that does not necessarily make it easy to see and which is why i did something interactive and yes i i do want to do more things i i would love to do something on mahabharata itself so shridharan dv is asking how do you actually transfer material from laptop uh from laptop to smartphone phone factor um well wh what i design i design my books with a specific uh frame in mind and so in most of the there are smartphones of different sizes so in some of the smartphones you might see a little bit of a gap on the top and the bottom that would come out blank now even though i work in the laptop i, I still create frames that are rectangular and upright which fits a smartphone in, fa in fact to add on that and say a few more about a few more things about that one of the things i wanted uh, about my phone uh, about my work is that you shouldn't have to take your phone and flip back and forth portrait to landscape it should be you know it should be a fixed format it should be either portrait or landscape i initially wanted that you should be able to read it like this in landscape form because everything else is landscape like television but eventually i found when i was uh, traveling in the train that you know most people still hold their phones like this and read so i i i fixed that format to read my books um uh, do you have any more questions okay um if if you have you thought of talking comics that is a very interesting question i have thought of talk, talk, talking comics and in fact uh before i had decided on this format i was probably going a little bit in that direction in in those days i would say like about 4 or 5 years ago there were a lot of comic books appearing as apps i eventually decided not to do talking comics right now because i wanted to stick to i didn't want to have my own app i wanted to stick to the mainstream mainstream um, book apps like itunes play store and kindle so i thought for now i will at least stick to uh, i'll i'll stick to the main book format but i definitely think that technology is making so many things possible that in the future if someone has to survive if someone has to you know produce great stuff one has to keep reinventing one has to keep looking at oh what is now possible what technology does uh, what what are the new things that technology now allows me to do and keep creating with that in in mind like one one of the things for example uh, that definitely is possible now is for your books to have hyperlinks uh, videos and audio embedded in that and i definitely want to go that route at some point of time would not that wouldn't that be a good language teacher yes definitely and i think it is already being harnessed by many language apps uh now that you bring language so 
I should mention that I'm also thinking about uh, translations of Mahabharata in possibly other world languages. What, the great thing about uh, visual comic book edition is that much of the work is a great amount of the work is across the language language barrier. So it will only take me a little bit more effort to translate and make it available for I don't know French or Japanese or even Indian languages Hindi or Telugu. So Dipilji is asking, what is my next work on? So my next work, in fact, it is something that I was on even before I published any of my books. So the title of that work is the case diary of Royal Agent Viru. Royal Agent Viru is based on the character Virat Gupta in Mudra Rakshas. Mudra Rakshas is a 12th century Sanskrit play which talks about the time when uh, Chanakya and Chandragupta had won over uh, Patliputra and there was a lot of conflict going on between them. And Virat Gupta is a character in that play. He is in fact a secret agent in the service of the Nandas who is working against Chanakya. So I had thought about picking up on that character and create a series of episodes based on his experiences right from the beginning when in the during the early years of Nanda proceeding through uh, the years when Alexander was attacking the northwest of India and then towards the end going into Chandragupta and the conflict. Yeah, it will probably have a lot of Chanakiniti, but the idea behind that series, like the case, case diary of Royal Agent Vidu, is that it will involve more common people, like people like soldiers and agents and merchants, and all the political things, like what the kings and the ministers are doing, are going to be sort of in the background. So it will talk about, it will bring Pataliputra as a city into life and kind of show ancient city life to people. So, um, so, so that was the book I was, I, I started out with. And that's a good question. When is it going to be available? So that book has been kind of a, it's been kind of a conflict for me. I wrote one draft, then I wrote and rewrote. And during this time, I kept publishing other books. I did Lilavati and Durga and Mahabharata and on and on. And every time I look back on that book and I'm never happy enough. So, so yes, I do not know when that book is going to be available. Maybe I will have to work with other authors. Maybe I need some fresh injection, but that is definitely the book that got me into writing comics in the first place. So it is definitely going to see the light of the day someday. Well, thank you, Sridharanji, for saying that I'm a very versatile man. Okay. Um, well, versatility is something I think I, I just lived for. I mean, I it's a boon and a curse. It, it's a curse in the sense that if I do too much of one thing, I kind of tend to get, I tend to get impatient and I'm always looking for something else to do. So that is what brought me from engineering to Wall Street to writing comic books. So Dimpleji is asking, who's your favorite comic books creator and who inspires you? Okay, I, I've already shared the story of PKS Kuti. Uh, of course, any child would, like any other child growing up in India, Amar Chitragata has been a, definitely a very big influence. Um, in, in the United States, I have, so in the United States, I, 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 there are there are actually uh, many comic books which kind of fly under the radar, and and it's 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 an interesting story. So when I wanted to find what is my what is the kind of style that I should adopt, and I was looking for many different ways how different people draw comics. So one day my son, who was I think 
four or five years old, brought to me a little book called The Mouse Paint. It's a tiny hardbound book, you know, for kindergarten children. And as soon as I flipped through these pages and I saw the little mouse and red, blue, white paints done in primary colors and in a very, very simplistic style, I was immediately sold. And so it, it's odd, but I think that is the book I will kind of identify as the book that triggered my style. Any tips for aspiring comic book writers? Okay, so one of the things that that is the hard part in comic book writing is that the graphic takes a lot of time and that is definitely not something I was prepared for. So what, what I would say like tips for aspiring comic book writers is first be prepared for that, that writing and drawing enough drawings to make a full comic book is a lot of work the other thing i would say is that you know drawing is some people tell me that you know i'm not into drawing my hand is not good at that and what i tell them is drawing is not something you do with your hand it's something you do with your head so it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if your hand is not smooth it doesn't matter that you cannot do a very realistic realistic looking artwork but at the end, it's your imagination. So you can be drawing something very simplistic, maybe stick drawings or maybe something with very few strokes. And yet you can put your imagination into it and still be able to express everything that you wanted to express. I'm, I'm, any more questions? Well, thank you. It was wonderful to have you all here today to take time from your Sunday evening or Sunday morning, depending upon where you're living. And I definitely look forward to all the encouragement. I thank you sincerely. I, I really want to get my work out and make a difference. So thank you all for being here. And do not forget to come back next week again for the next episode of the Indic Chat. Thank you.